Hey everybody, it's Rob here. We just got the missing patch notes for all the new uniques and all the new aspects here. Win season 5. So this is gonna include Crown of Lucio and we got like Giga good shot of Virenthiel. We got some nerfs to Lokran. We got insane buffs here to the creeping death aspect like leveling up all the dot builds. So let's get into it here. I will show them here um, a part of the planner because unfortunately Blizzard didn't put like PTR and new version, they just put the new version so it's gonna be very hard to follow if you don't have the planner. So first of all, Crown of Lucian, as you remember, or you may remember, this was the best item by far, even better than Harlequin's Quest, they now have nerfed this significantly. So this is how it used to look. So it used to, whenever you're spending resource, increase your damage but also reduce your resources again. And they completely got rid of this reduce resource path. So now, instead of 25 damage, it only gives you 15. So you're already, right off the bat, are losing about 30% damage here on the Crown of Lucio. And we already calculated this. So you used to have this multiplier, and now you only have this multiplier, uh, resulting in 30% damage loss. And also, you don't have any of the resource cost reduction anymore here. So it used to give you 75 resource cost reduction. They completely cut this out. So um, I unfortunately think the fun police got this one. Like this one, yes, it was very strong, but now, I mean, I don't know about what you think, but I think it's gonna be kind of useless now. Like it basically just reduces your um, your resources. It just increases your resource cost by so much and only gives you very little damage. So yeah, thirty percent less damage and also no more resource cost reduction. And they also, for some reason, gave it shadow rest instead of having um, maximum resources here. So <laughs> that is also a very big yikes on the affixes. So this one has been kind of nerfed here quite a lot. And then we have the endurance phase. This one got a pretty nice buff. It used to be um, these gloves here that have uh, ranks to core skills. Lucky it healing received all stats, and they basically almost make you, made you immortal on the PTR. So they removed this from 4, uh, they reduced this from 4 to 2 seconds, but they also added cooldown on gloves. So for example, uh, for all the sorcerers out there, having cooldown on gloves is going to be insane. Um, so probably we're not going to run Crown, Crown of Lucio, we're just going to run the Harlequin's Crest. And then we have even more cooldown to go with it, and we're going to have 50 cooldown, we can have another like 20 cooldown here. So that's going to be pretty wild with some GG cooldown reduction. And then here, the biggest item, Shard of Virenthiel. It used to be 300% X, as you see here in the planner. Shard of Virenthiel, 300% X. Now they reduce this, but it is still 200% X. So that's from a times four to a times three. And there is only a 33% nerf on the Shard of Virenthiel. So all the basic skill builds are still gonna be very strong. The basic stats did not change. I think they got even stronger. Uh, because they changed the inherit here to be 50% damage. All stats, max resource, basic skill attack speed and ranks to basic skill on a one hand weapon. You definitely want to be uh, master working this now. So uh, instead of maximum resource, you would now always go basic skills, man. And we're going to get another like plus five basic skills on here or something. So that's insane. Still very strong. This one actually... Bash Barb is going to still be very good, even Flay Barb, there's going to be some changes to Creeping Death later that make the Flay Barb potentially S tier again, even though we had the Gushing Wounds nerfs. But yeah, it's still going to eat good, and also the Firebolt Sorg, I think with this triple damage here, is still going to be very, very good. Because we can make up for the primary resource that it costs um, just with our Starless Sky here. So once we rock the Starless Sky, uh, this one makes all your... Um, generators into a spender as well as a generator so you are spending 25 but with this it's reduced to 50 by 50 percent so you're spending 12 and then you're generating 15 for example with bash so you're not spending any resource in the end and you're getting the 1.5x from the starless guy so insane synergy bash barb flay barb and also fireball sorg and some other core uh, basic skill builds are going to be very strong only a 33 percent nerf still insane uh, Rakanov, I don't think they changed anything here, but you still have this crazy rest and you still have cooldown on boots. Uh, so for those of you who don't know, it's these boots here, Rakanov's Wake. Uh, pretty good change uh, overall to have these kind of boots and you can have them on the live server. I'm still hoping that they increase the fire damage or something. That would be kind of cool, but uh, we don't know yet. And then uh, here, the next one, big change here, Lokran Talisman. It's this amulet that used to be uh, together with Shard of Rirantheel and Lucio in every build. And it used to give you 0.5 per resource and 1% X crit damage. 
and they nerfed this a lot. So now instead of uh, a 0.5% crit, it's only 0.4 up to 40 rather than 50. So you're getting 40% crit, uh, just assuming you have 300 resources. And then you're only getting 0.2. This is divided by 5. It used to be 1% X per uh, primary resource above 100. Uh, multiplicative crit damage, but now it's divided by five. So this one is actually severely nerfed. I did some rough math and it's like nerfed by a factor of two and a half. So you are basically losing two and a half X damage here in comparison to the old builds. And this will most likely mean that we're not going to play the Lockrun Talisman. A normal amulet with cooldown reduction and crit chance and stuff is going to be better because, you know, uh, this amulet here just has very bad stats overall and, and you can also not have a passive. So this one has also been nerfed a lot. I would have liked, liked to see this like not nerfed that much, maybe like a 0.4 or 0.5 here. But let me know what you think in the comments. I think it was a cool uh, item, but now overall it's only giving you like a, what is it, like a double damage buff or something. Like double damage on the amulet, but you're losing all the stats as well. So you're losing an aspect. It, it might be still kind of decent, but I would have liked this to be a bit better. But yeah, let me know what you think. Um, then we have some pretty cool stuff here. Inevitable Fate, uh, very strong still. Uh, Wind Ball, this one also got buffed. I think it used to be a 10% X. This, this goes on boots, it's a utility aspect. And you can put this on boots, for example, and every two seconds you're pulling in enemies, and then they are taking 30% bonus damage from all sources for three seconds. Uh, this might also work in a group. We have to retest this on a live game, but very strong, 30% X, um, five second ICD. But I think this has been buffed from 10%, 10 so very cool. Uh, some extra thorns buffs here. Um, we have this one here that also made Perma Flame Shield uh, still somewhat of a viable option. Uh, it still occurs every five seconds, so that is still insane here. It's basically gonna cast your Flame Shield, Defensive, Subterfuge, or Macabre skills, very strong. Dark Dance here still at the 1.8x. This used to be one of the hearts from season one that are making a comeback. And so is the next one here. Creeping Death. This is a damage over time based one. Um, and right now on the PTR, it was 20% and 40%, right? For dots, for every different core control. And now it's been gigabuffed by more than two and a half times. We have, instead of 20, it's now 50% X. And against unstoppable or staggered bosses, you're now dealing two and a half times more dot damage. And uh, keep in mind, you can stack this with all the different core control effects. Like, it's very easy to stack slow, to stack stun, to stack immobilize, and uh, all these kinds of different things here. So, for example, on the barb, you can also stack taunt with challenging shout. Does the flay build comes to mind here? You have slow. So you can have slow here with a hamstring, at least against healthy targets. You can have taunt with challenging shout. Uh, you can go with like a lucky hit roll or something if you want. Like instead of crowd control rotation, we can do a lucky hit to immobilize, lucky hit to uh, to freeze, and all these kinds of things. So you can stack a bunch of different. We're gonna cook a flame up with this. We can stack a bunch of different crowd control effects and probably get like triple damage from this creeping death. And it's it's just a normal aspect. You can put this on the amulet, and or even on the weapon, right? You can put this on a two hundred weapon, and it's gonna be like three hundred percent. I'm not quite sure how it's gonna work there, but I think it's gonna be three hundred percent. That's gonna be insane. <laughs> thank you for all the thank content. You for all the co hey, thanks, man, for the support. Tomat bosses, let's go. Do you think Whirlwind Bash will be strong at carrying people through this content? Yes, the bosses are going to be very easy. Flay will be strong, Bash will be strong, Whirlwind will be strong for uh, speed farming. Very good stuff, man. We have the Prudent Heart here, becoming immune. Okay, that's not that great. And then here next, Unbroken Chain. Again, I'm going to link this chat in the description these patch notes, um, we have 22% flat cooldown reduction. Uh, this used to be Unbroken Chain. This used to be uh, way worse. It used to be just steel grass cooldown, but now it's generic base cooldown. The amulet itself is still pretty bad, but if I, you find this like early on, it's going to be pretty cool to have 22% cooldown. Again, this is more than a shako. If you masterwork this plus great affix, it's going to be about 60%. Almost. It's going to be like 55 or something. It's going to be between 55 and 60% cooldown reduction on one item. That's insane, man. We have the third blade. And this is the um, 
There's more than Shako, yeah. Uh, the third blade has been the death blow one. I don't think I, I wanted a buff to this because I think uh, death blow is still very much on the weak side. But this is the third blade. I don't think it got changed. It has basically the same effect as far as I uh, checked it, and it's gonna be a decent B tier build, but not nothing crazy strong. Uh, Executioner. If you kill an enemy with overpower, you spawn an earthquake. It has an ICD. Then this one got buffed as well. The aspect of the fortress. I actually plan to uh, play this on some builds. So it used to be. Uh, 5% I think. I'm on Bob, yes. Aspect of the Fortress here. You see it used to be 5% per 10% missing life, so up to 50%. But now they buffed it to 6%, so you're getting up to 60% damage reduction, or like 50-something, uh, just with this Aspect of the Fortress. And then the Anger Management, this one has been nerfed a little bit. It was uh, it was too strong, like <laughs> just, being, just being really, it would have been played on pretty much every build. But the anger management, it's not a big uh, nerf. It goes it goes from two fury per second drain to four fury per second drain. So you just need to have one fury per second roll on your boots or something and you're gonna make up for it. So that is still insanely strong. Anger management basically here uh, out there to give you permanent berserking damage and just draining a couple of uh, fury. But again, there's uh, several things to make up for it. Um, then we have the druid here. We have the basilisk here. This one, I don't think got changed much. It's still very strong and very good base stats here. I think the basic may have been changed a little bit. But that is, is still a very, very strong item overall. We have the Mernier Rig Ring. I didn't know the stats here, but this has a lot of stats. And it also has double damage here for the Druids. So just as long as you have Cataclysm active, you have unlimited spirit and double damage. This is the crazy ring. Druid mentioned, man, just double damage. Moon Rage, I think they also buffed this. Uh, Moon Rage. They buffed basically the entire secondary. This is for wolves. You gain plus three to wolf, and this is a lucky hit against the bosses. The so moon rage is looking very strong as well. Uh, and then a bunch of other stuff here. Spirit bond, like some nice DR. I'm not sure what, what exactly this used to be. 35 it's now. And it used to be 17, so they doubled this from 17 to, to 35. Big damage reduction here for the druid. Then we have Necromancer. Um, there's been a couple changes here to the Mortar Cook, Stragul. We have the Shade Mist here, basically doing Shadow Damage, Cursed Aura, Great Feast. I think these are pretty much unchanged. Then we have Rogue. So this one was this one was insane. On Rogue, we had the Amber Crooks. This one was completely broken on the PTI and was one-shotting everything. So they nerfed this from 30% effectiveness. Um, down now to 20% effectiveness, and they changed it from two to now just one totem. This was double dipping or penta dipping with different stuff, so I hope they also um, changed all the bugs that were occurring with the Umba Crooks, but we'll see. I think it's still a very strong item here for the rogues. Uh, Shroud of Kandaros, also the, the Dark Shroud, this was a chest armor on the rogue. Also very strong and good alternative to just having normal Dark Shroud. Great Feast was a massive buff, right, but compared to the PTR, each minion drains two essence but deals 125% bonus damage. Okay, yeah, sorry, I skipped over this. Yeah, that's insane. Okay, it used to be 45%, yes. You drain a bit more essence now. Okay, Great Feast is a big man minion. Okay, sorry about that. Yeah, minion necro, thanks chat for reminding me. Minion Necro just got double damage. What the hell, man? And this also works for non-minions. Okay, they buffed this a lot. Okay, this actually might be enough to move Minion Necro like to the top of eight here. Holy shit, yeah. That's insane. Okay, yeah, great feast. The Necromancer is safe, dude. This is Blighted Aspect on steroids, yes. And you can put this on your weapon. What? Okay, guys, Minion Necro, log in. Yeah, that's actually insane. And then I think Rogue, uh, True Side. Okay, this is double. This was already the same. Cold Clip, this one also got uh, buffed. So it used to be 20% here. Basic skills are always cold imbued. You deal 20x damage for enemies who are chilled or frozen. And now this goes from 20 to 35. Like Rogue needed some more buffs. So 
Rogue is getting even stronger here. And then we have the Sorcerer, last but not least here. There's a lot of stuff. Uh, Axial Conduit, this one also is going up. Um, so it used to have just resource generation, but now it also have maximum resource. So you get more mana here. And just in general, Chain Lightning received a lot of buffs. We have the Vox Omnium. This is a unique staff. Uh, looks like this. I think this is pretty much unchanged, but this was already very strong. Um, basically, having all the basic skills and another 1.9x. Uh, then we have Winter Touch, we have Jolting and Fire Sun. This is mostly like environmental damage. So this is not like super crazy, but man, I kind of missed this here on the Necro. So great feast. Man, people were like, I made this poll in my community and only 8% of players wanted to play Necromancer. This might change now. Is the minion Necro even much weaker than it is right now? I mean, we have no Holy Bold Elixir, but holy shit, man. They buffed this, they buffed this a ton. Again, from 45, just casually to 125% bonus damage. Oh yeah, okay, Bone Spirit can use that too. Yeah, true, but at some point you're gonna have... Actually, 5 Essence per second drain is fine. You can just have like a Master worked on the, on the helm or on the boots or whatever. And you're gonna have enough essence gain again. You can like negate this negative effect. Because it used to be seven, right? It used to be seven less damage. I mean, I almost missed this. And now it's uh, more damage and five essence. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, okay. This is gonna be all the necro builds that are gonna rejoice. That's insane. But yeah, also Shard of Virenthil staying very much the same. I mean, 33% nerf, but that's still. Is gonna be so bonkers. 200x on basic skills. Pew! And then the biggest one, I think, here, Creeping Death, also. Depending on how many crowd controls you have, it can give you double or even triple damage, man. Well, I'm looking forward to it, guys. It seems to be a pretty cool season. Let me know what you think in the comments. I think it's gonna be fun, guys. There's gonna be a lot of cooking. We're gonna make tier lists here next days. And uh, check out all the different build guides. But yeah, basic skills still strong. Dot skills still strong. Even minion necros. Log in. GG, my friends. Hope you enjoyed. Take care. If you like this video, make sure to subscribe, leave a like or a comment. I'm also live on Twitch almost every day. So come and say hi.